Imagine for a moment. What if everything around you, every moment, every sound, every person you've ever known, wasn't real? What if our entire reality was a simulation? The lights, the stars, the planet beneath your feet, just lines of code. Sounds crazy, right? But some of the greatest minds, both in science and philosophy, believe it's possible. Today, we're diving into one of the most fascinating and mind-boggling ideas out there. Simulation theory. In this episode, we'll explore the idea that our world might be a giant, super-advanced computer simulation. Could you be living inside a highly sophisticated video game? And if so, what does that even mean for us? How does it affect how we view the world, ethics, and reality itself? Coming up next, let's explore the digital rabbit hole. Okay, first things first. What exactly is simulation theory? Close your eyes for a second and imagine this. You're sitting in a room, but it's not really a room as you know it. The walls, the floor, even your own body. It's all just an illusion, lines of code in a massive, unimaginable computer simulation. This isn't just the plot of a sci-fi movie. Some of the brightest minds on the planet actually think this could be real. Simulation theory is the idea that what we see, touch, and experience might not be real in the way we think. Instead, we could be like characters in an advanced video game, created by beings with technology far beyond anything we can imagine. Are we a cosmic science experiment? A virtual reality experience? Or maybe we're real, and this is all nonsense. So, let's break it down. Simulation theory is a bit like that mind-bending moment in The Matrix when Neo discovers that his whole world is a digital construct. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. I didn't say it would be easy. But this theory is more than just fiction. It suggests that everything around us, from the stars in the sky to the taste of your morning coffee, is actually built from code. One of the first to introduce this idea in a serious way was philosopher Nick Bostrom. In 2003, Bostrom published a paper suggesting that if a civilization becomes technologically advanced enough, they could create simulations so powerful and lifelike that the characters inside wouldn't know they were in a hyper-realistic simulation. Think about how video games have evolved. A few decades ago, characters were made up of simple pixels, now, games have characters with complex emotions, lifelike environments, and AI that can mimic thought. If technology keeps advancing, who's to say we couldn't create a world like ours, down to every last detail? And what's stopping an even more advanced civilization? Possibly aliens or future human from doing exactly that? Maybe they've already done it. Maybe we're in that simulation right now. Okay, now picture this scenario. Your brain is sitting in a lab, floating in a tank of life-sustaining liquid. Wires are connected to it, feeding it signals that make you believe you're living your everyday life. This is the famous thought experiment called the brain in a vat argument. Scientists and philosophers have used this idea to question reality for years. If your brain is simply reacting to the electrical signals it's given— then how would you know if those signals are coming from actual experiences or if they're all just simulated input? Everything we experience, everything, is, to our brains, electrical signals. Whether it's a computer program or an alien science experiment, the question is the same. If all we know is filtered through our senses, how can we be certain that those senses are showing us the real world? And here's the spooky part. According to simulation theory, 
It doesn't really matter if we're just brains in a vat or if our entire universe is one giant simulation. The effect is the same. We'd never know. You want to hear other arguments for why some think we're all living in a cosmic version of The Sims or The Matrix? I know it sounds like pretty wild, but there are some reasons why this might make more sense than you'd think. Buckle up, because this is going to get weirdly fun. Cosmic Horizon Problem and Faster Than Light Expansion All right, first up. Some say the Big Bang argument doesn't quite add up in explaining our creation. For instance, right after the Big Bang, the universe expanded faster than the speed of light, something called cosmic inflation. But according to our current understanding of physics, that shouldn't be possible. But then again, if our universe is a simulation, maybe it was just coded to expand that way. I mean, if you're setting up a virtual universe, why stick to pesky physics rules? Fine-tuning of universal constants The universe's constants, stuff like the gravitational constant or the speed of light, are set just right for life. If they were off even a little, we'd all be toast. Or, more likely, we wouldn't exist at all. It's so precise that some people think it's more like programming than random chance. In a simulation, these constants could be set by whoever or whatever is running the show. Maybe we're just a bunch of code, finely tuned to keep the simulation stable and interesting. Creepy, right? Information as the fundamental building block. Then there's this whole idea that information, not matter or energy, is the real foundation of everything. Physicist John Archibald Wheeler called it it from bit. Basically, everything boils down to informational bits like in a computer program. Imagine if we're not made of atoms and particles at our deepest level, but actual data. Sounds a lot like the back end of a simulation. Quantum indeterminacy and observer effect. Next, let's talk about quantum weirdness. There's this thing called the observer effect, where particles exist in a kind of fuzzy, probable state until we observe them. It's like they don't decide where to be until we look. This is kind of like video games that only load what you can see. No point rendering stuff if no one's looking at it, right? It's a brilliant way to save on computational power. So maybe our universe only renders itself when someone is paying attention. Efficient, if you're running a simulation. Mathematics of the universe as code. Okay, here's a really trippy one. Physicist James Gates found that some equations in string theory have code embedded in them. Yes, actual code, like the stuff that runs computers. If the universe's math looks like programming code, well, maybe it is programming code. This is basically like looking behind the scenes of your favorite game and finding out there's a secret set of instructions making it all run. Limits of the Observable Universe Now, let's think about the observable universe. We can only see so far, right? Beyond that, who knows? It's like in a video game where there's a boundary that keeps you from going past a certain point. Maybe we can't see beyond a certain distance, because our simulation only processes what's within the observable range. Why bother rendering the whole thing if we can't even access it? Computational Limitations and Planck Scale Have you heard of the Planck Scale? It's the smallest size we can measure in space and time, like a pixel limit for the universe. If we could measure anything smaller, it wouldn't make sense. It's like the universe itself is pixelated. In a continuous, non-digital universe, you wouldn't expect to hit this kind of limit, but in a simulation? Oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. The Fermi Paradox and Rare Earth Hypothesis All right, last one. The Fermi Paradox. Our universe is huge. So why haven't we met other intelligent civilizations? In a simulation, 
Maybe the creators limited the player count to keep things manageable. Earth could be the main set piece, with human beings as the primary characters to focus on. This would also explain why intelligent life seems so rare. If we're in a simulation, then it's all about us. That's, heh <laughs> kind of flattering. Sort of. Are we a science experiment? If we are in a simulation, who created it? Some suggest we might be part of a cosmic experiment, a reality run by some higher intelligence or an advanced civilization. Maybe we're in a simulation designed by an alien scientist for their school project. A test to see how life evolves under certain conditions. Or maybe we're in an elaborate VR experience, where our real selves are somewhere else, far away, and this Earth life is just a short ride. Imagine signing up for a hyper-realistic experience and waking up here in a body, forgetting your real self. Some have suggested that consciousness could be the one thing that's real about us, while everything else, the world we see, the lives we live, is simply the setting we've chosen to experience. I'd like to float one more possibility, one that has nothing to do with science or technology, one that is a bit more spiritual. If we are actually spiritual beings created by God, then maybe this is just the temporary world he created for us before we go back to a more ethereal home. In fact, many people who claim to have had near-death experiences report learning something to this effect during their time on the other side. They too say that this world is not reality. Anyway, I think no exploration of this topic is complete without at least discussing that thought. What do you think? But not everyone buys into the idea. Some scientists and philosophers think simulation theory is just pseudoscience. They argue there's no real evidence to prove we're in a simulation, just a lot of interesting coincidences. One problem is, if we are simulated, then proving it would be almost impossible. Any evidence we gather could just be part of the program. And some critics, like physicist Sabine Hossenfelder, argue that it's a waste of time to focus on simulation theory because it's more of a thought experiment than actual science. To her, without tangible proof, simulation theory is just as unverifiable as any religious belief. And here's another issue. If we're in a simulation, who's simulating the beings that created our simulation? Do they have their own reality or are they in a simulation too? It leads to a loop with no clear answer which makes some people believe it's just a philosophical trick without real substance. What does it all mean? So, are we real? Or just incredibly advanced characters in a cosmic computer game? Right now, we don't know, and we might never know. But what simulation theory does is make us question the very nature of reality, which can be valuable all on its own. What matters most is how we choose to live. Whether we're code or flesh and bone, our experiences feel real to us. We love, we dream, we suffer, we hope. And maybe that's the point. Because whether this is a simulation or not, the way we experience life is what defines us. Maybe reality is something we create. Or maybe reality is stranger than we can ever imagine. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this mind-bending journey, please like and subscribe for more fascinating and strange videos.